you did have a little bit of a problem with the drip. Am I actually going to say this on yeah. a podcast? <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. There's literally no info. is too much info here. There's this trend going around at the moment where people stand in front of a camera and they're like, did you notice my biggest insecurity? Yes. No, yes. no, you didn't. So like, why would yeah. anyone notice yours? And I feel like that's so kind of true. so true. Like the people that you think look amazing mm. after giving birth, they probably feel so self-conscious about themselves. It's, it's sadly very true. What is baby girl's name? Everyone wants to know. And I'm so excited. But you're going to find out literally right now. Hey guys, and welcome to our brand new podcast, The 3AM Club with me, Caitlin. And me, Leah. We'll be talking everything about our relationship and parenting and everything that comes along with that. Pooey nappies. Couple fights. Screaming toddlers. And sleepless nights. So you're going to hear all about our parenting adventures, the good, the bad and the mad as we become parents of two. And we'll also bring some amazing guests along for the ride. We want to hear all about your parenting, tips and hacks, funny stories, couple fails and questions on our segment, The Midnight Mail. So welcome welcome to to the the 3AM Club. Hey guys, and welcome to the 3AM Club with me, Caitlin. And me, Leah. This is going to (laughs) be a bit of a start to this episode because we had the most stressful journey here oh my gosh oh my gosh caitlin i can't i don't even know where to begin we left at half six this morning i know we got here at what time 10 o'clock 10 o'clock oh my gosh that How was many, so is that stressful. three and a half hours three and a half hours oh and gosh. halfway through caitlin starts making these really weird noises and i'm like <laughs> what's wrong it's like leah I, I need a wee no first i was like i can't even talk i can't talk to you yeah i really can't talk true. right now and then i was like no i really need a wee i don't know what i'm gonna do so i had the idea of either peeing in oakley's hat yeah which that was Kate- ridiculous <laughs> obviously i'm not gonna pee in oakley's hat well i feel like if you're desperate you if we had to. a cup maybe but like it was either oakley's cut cu- oakley's hat sorry or a walker's crisp bag yeah and which you decided neither against. i didn't i didn't do either yeah, so I think for every episode going forward, Caitlin has promised me, so you've heard it here first, you've promised me you're actually going to get the train. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like life is very stressful mm. at the moment. With so, We have so many things going on, like so many exciting things, yeah. but lots of stressful things as well. So it's quite, it's it's a lot. It's a lot, isn't it? It is, but I feel like you're coping really well. And like I said, like baby girl... And I know we're saying baby girl now. You will actually hear baby girl's name at the end of this episode. So stay tuned. That's but for crazy now, that we're going to actually be revealing her I know, name. I can't wait. But for now, I just want to say, like, you're so close to the end of the pregnancy. I feel bad, though, because I feel like I it's been so hard and I kind of feel guilty for, like admitting that it's hard no I think it's good I said this the other day it's so good that you're actually now normalizing because whenever someone says they're pregnant and like their pregnancy everyone is always so positive but it is hard it's hard on your body it's hard mentally Mm. and what you've gone through in this pregnancy is unimaginable like it's been a really tough time and then on top of that we have a toddler we're balancing work like there's so many things to think about it's just yeah I don't know I just feel bad about it because I feel like obviously being pregnant is amazing and I'm so grateful that I'm pregnant and like we have our gorgeous baby girl coming soon which is amazing but then obviously like I'm struggling with a lot of different things like the like at the beginning of the pregnancy I had um hyperemesis so I was sick for literally Bed bound. It was, yeah, for like 17 mm. weeks, it was honestly awful. awful. And if anyone doesn't know what hyperemesis is, it's like morning sickness on steroids. <laughs> it was honestly I've never awful. seen you like that. And no. I, I admit I wasn't the best partner during that time. I was... Mm. I didn't, we didn't know it was hyperemesis and I was so worried that you weren't eating. So I'd be like, <laughs> you need to eat for the baby. Yeah, like, you, I, I you did make I it a bit good. more stressful. I did and I apologise for that because when we went to the hospital, so eventually, obviously, Caitlin was throwing up all her meals and you were just Because at the so beginning, unwell. it started, it started like nausea mm. and I was just nauseous and I was like, okay, I can deal with this. And then the nausea became extreme nausea yeah. with food aversions and I literally like could not, like if you think of your worst food that you hate, so what's something that you hate? Oh, tuna. 
tuna. Well, think of tuna that every single meal oh that gosh. exists is tuna and you just, you, but, you can't eat it. But for a backstory, obviously, sadly, you lost your mum. Mm. So I... I was struggling to know, is this grieving? Are you not eating? Are you in bed? Because obviously you're grieving. Yeah. Or is there something else? Because at the time we did not know that you had hypermesis. No, we so, thought, we just was like, oh, it just it's morning sickness. Like you would say to me, Caitlin, I had morning sickness. Like you're just being yeah. weak. You were literally like, no, you're just I, being I just, weak. No, I was being horrible because I was so worried about the baby and I wanted to like mm -hmm. switch your mind to, because I didn't know it was hypermesis. Yeah. I, I, I thought you just like, obviously we're grieving I needed you to like you were trying to kind of so shock worried. me out of it yeah but I, I think at one point I was literally asleep for like 23 hours you a day you literally was I, I remember so it was awful what was it we did the sets reveal we we did the sets reveal and then we went downstairs and your aunt and cousin was over and mm. they were like look we're here go to the hospital right now yeah because we did the sex reveal and then I tried to eat a bit of cake which, mm. which was like the first thing I could like I tried to eat yeah. that day and I just threw it straight back up and they were like, no, this is ridiculous. You have to go to the hospital. And I remember yeah. like they'd done all the tests and then we heard like in the corridor and I'm like, oh my God, no, she needs to be admitted overnight. And we're like, mm. oh my God, is this about you? And like they came over and they said, we don't know how you've lasted this long. Like mm. you've got really high, is it ketone levels? I think so. So then obviously yeah. you stayed in overnight and you honestly, when I came to see you the next day, you looked so much better. You were like, <laughs> Up and you were like, I feel so good. Yeah, the but you drip did, literally you did have a little bit of a problem with the drip. Oh God, <laughs> this is embarrassing. So, oh my, oh my God, am I actually going to say this on yeah. a podcast? <laughs> oh my gosh, okay. literally no info is too much info. Here. That is true. So I was on a drip because I was dehydrated and um, <laughs> like very hungry. Like I, I wasn't able to eat. So I think my body got a bit of shock from all this fluid that was in me. So I had like one drip and then they put on another drip and it was 3 a.m. I That's really funny. 3 a.m. It was 3 a.m. It was actually 3 a.m. Everything happens at 3 a.m. I swear. <laughs> so I couldn't sleep because again, I think my body was in shock that I had all this fluid in mm. me. And <laughs> I, can't, I can't say it. Go on. You say it. Go on. So are you sure? Yeah. Okay. So then Caitlin pooed herself and I got a text <laughs> at like four in the morning saying, I've just pooed myself. I'm attached to a drip. I don't know where to put my knickers. So I put it in the drawer next to me. I was, I couldn't <laughs> move. And I was like, what am I meant to do? I didn't want, I didn't want to call no. the nurses because I was so embarrassed. It wasn't like a full on, it was just a bit like a, yeah. a fart that followed for a bit. <laughs> Bless you, but I came with a spare change of knickers and yeah. And the next morning... The we, next morning, yeah, because yeah, I, I, I wouldn't know, be able to have gone I had to in there. I sit there, like waiting. Oh, yeah, but but thankfully was... now your pregnancy. I know it is tough, but you don't have the high premises. No, it was it was awful, but it is so much better. But I am looking forward to giving birth. Like so am I. <laughs> not the birth, but like her being here and not oh, being pregnant. Talking and... about the birth, we were actually discussing this the other day. So I'm not. I might not be the only birth partner you'll have. Maybe. We might Maybe. have. Now, people might think this is really weird, but I feel like with everything you've gone through, like, the more support, the better. Yeah. So, and, like, our best friend, Connor, he's, like, he's just the mm. most amazing person. So we think he might be at the birth. But it depends, obviously, what time labour is and everything. Yeah. But it's kind of complicated as well because... With IVF pregnancies in England, mm. you aren't allowed to go past 40 weeks. Mm. So that means that if I don't go into spontaneous labour before 40 weeks, then I have to be either induced or oh, have a C-section. And if I have either of those, Connor can't yeah. be there. But yeah, Hopefully, if all goes to plan, be me and Connor, we'll be driving you mad. <laughs> be, but I think it's a nice little... Yeah, a nice little support system for you. It will be nice. To be honest, if Connor's there, I feel like I'll be too scared to show him. Like, not too scared, but I think I'll be more reserved if I'm really? in pain. Yeah, because like with you, I can completely be myself, and obviously yeah. with Connor, I can be myself. But I feel like I'll be a bit scared. But then, well, then if I'm in obviously so much then we pain. Won't, yeah, <laughs> then obviously like we won't have Connor. But I feel like obviously when you're giving birth, you will not care who's yeah. in the room. You'll be screaming like. Do you think? Because you know. you've always yeah. said I won't scream. Yeah, but I feel like with labour, surely I will think you're not normal if you don't scream. If you're just there like this. But have you not seen some of those videos where people are like so calm and they're like doing deep breathing? I, I, That's I don't. probably when they've had the epidural, but you'll be 
if you're yeah. like calm before that, then I don't know what's wrong with you. I you're guess... just ginger. You've got no pain tolerance. <laughs> no, that's not true. You never feel pain. You just said I have no pain tolerance. No, no you have. Sorry, you have very high oh, tolerance yeah. to pain. You Thank don't you. feel any pain. I do, but. I, I can handle it quite well. Whereas you, 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 oh, I'm Leah the can't baby. handle any pain. I actually had like panic attacks in the hospital in the adoption mm. room before I gave birth to Oakley. I don't know if it's a thing, but I honestly felt I would not be able to get Oakley out of me. Yeah. But I asked for a C-section. And I in was the like, middle of your induction. In the middle of the induction. And I was like, hysterical. I was crying. And they were like, we can't promise you because we've got twins first. We've got high risk pregnancies. We were like, yeah, no, that's fine. They were like, you'll be on the end of the list and you might not even make it till the next day. Anyway, the next day came. They were like, you're first on the list. Come on, you're having yeah. a C-section. I think they walked into your bay, like your bay, when they were discussing the C-section. Mm. They saw what state you oh. were in and they were like, no, we have yeah. to put this girl first. The rest of them are going to be fine. That is honestly the difference between us two. I am literally, I really like can't keep my emotions in and I'm mm. just like scared of my own shadow sometimes and you're just <laughs> like, come on, tough it up. Let's let's do this. It'll all be okay. So we spoke a lot about our best friend, Connor, and yes. he is honestly so amazing. He's the best best friend ever. He, oh, I he's, can't even. He's amazing. Um, mm. And we met him, I think it was like, we always oh, laugh about yes, this. you met him first, Caitlin. You we, became friends first. We always joke about this. I'm yeah. like, yeah, me and Connor are like, we met first. So yeah. yeah, but it's only a joke. Yeah, we met like nine-ish years ago. Yeah. All three of us suffered from eating disorders. Yeah. And there used to be this like little online community on Instagram where people would um, like post pictures of their food <laughs> and like, but it was really positive. Like you yeah, would encourage each was. other to eat and like, yeah, just like offer advice and stuff and help each other through the struggles. And we actually met each other on there, but we also yeah. met our best friend, Connor. I feel like the talking about eating disorders, like in particular, a lot of people are like, oh, you just want to be skinny. When mm. no, it's nothing to do with your weight. It's literally to do with control. Like there was a time in my life where I felt I had no control over anything. And that was the one thing I could control. Mm. And I feel like that is such a big misconception. I was the same. Like, I feel like I didn't even realise it at the time, mm. but I feel like I felt like I couldn't control my mum's health because my mum has been unwell, like, my whole life. And um, I was her carer. And I felt like though I couldn't control her health. I couldn't mm. protect her. So I used food as a coping mechanism to try and... I guess, yeah. I don't know, have con some sort of control in my life. There is that big misconception that people just want to be skinny. And that's it's nothing, that, like, it's not that. It's not, no. it is not that. And people don't understand that. Like, it's literally a mental thing. I feel like a f the physical, it's like got physical side effects yes. where you lose weight. Yeah. Not always, it depends what eating disorder you have, but yeah. like each can show physically. But I know that also a lot of people that have had eating disorders can like struggle again mm. in pregnancy and stuff. Oh, which, really? Yeah, well, because yeah. like obviously pregnancy is a huge change on your body. Yeah. And like you gain weight and because obviously you're going to gain weight. Yeah. You're, getting, you're growing a baby. Mm. And a lot of people do struggle with that. And I feel like I haven't personally struggled with that, no. thank thankfully. I don't know if you did. I'm struggling more now. I, I don't even recognise my body. Like, mm. I think I might tell you every single day, like, ha like I hate my body. Yeah, I Which know. is actually so sad because I birthed Oakley and I I'm know. so grateful to my body. But it was only, like, two weeks ago that I actually got some clothes in my size. Mm. And, like, that was just such a big step for me. But it is hard and I feel like I'm on a journey with it. But I feel like, it's normal. It's mm. so normal to not feel 100% yourself. But I would do it a million times over if I had open. It makes me so sad when you say that you hate your body because obviously I think your body is amazing and beautiful and like it's just so incredible that you literally grew our son. Like, yeah. You grew yeah. our son, you gave birth to our son. Obviously your body is not going to be the same and like will probably never be the same no, no matter what because... It's changed. But I but see people that give birth and their bodies, like, to me, I mean, yeah. I don't know how they're feeling, but to me, I'm like, how did you do that? But I feel like, you know, I've, there's this trend going around at the moment where people stand in front of a camera and they're like, did you notice my biggest insecurity? Yes. 
no yes. no you didn't so like why would yeah. anyone notice yours and I feel like that's Very kind of true. so true like the people that you think look amazing after mm. giving birth they probably feel so self-conscious about themselves it's very, sadly very true and I feel like everyone in life has something they feel self-conscious about mm. like and it doesn't it doesn't mean that other people see it it doesn't mean that yeah. you're not beautiful and perfect just as you are so yeah there are so many things in life that are just completely out of your control but yeah we have tried to have some control over giving birth <laughs> we've got quite a lot of things planned for baby girl yes I think this week we're doing the hospital bag we've like bought everything we just need to put it all together so we've mm. got nappies and you might think we're talking about nappies for the baby no, no nappies for you as well <laughs> nappies for me I didn't know that until you gave birth that the mums actually yeah. have to wear nappies after they give birth because you lose a lot of blood and stuff. Yeah, so you learn everything. Yeah, so I've got nappies. You've got like long chargers, which is actually a really good hack because obviously the plug isn't always near the hospital bed. So you're yeah. going to want to go on your phone. You're going to want a distraction. What else? Just like shampoos, conditioners, yeah. flip-flops. Like loads of things for the hospital bag. But then we've also, <laughs> we've got all of the things that we need for her as well, pretty much. Yes, yeah, so I think we know what she's going to bring home, like what she's going to come home in. Yeah, we've got a cute little outfit ready. I feel like you've chosen what she's going to come home <laughs> like, in because I'm not sure what it is. What is Isn't it? it? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't we say no? Because she was going to wear like that really nice outfit. <laughs> You're like, she's we like, know, and I'm thinking, no, do we? She's going to wear that really nice outfit from Nets that my mum got. Which one? The floral yeah, one? Yeah, but then they're the... like, no, babies don't really go home in that. So I thought, you know that I live in Freya? The one we kind of oh, got. Oh, you've definitely made this up yourself and decided, because I don't know what you're talking about. You We've know never the one spoke... like, with a cute little wrist and it's like a little flower? The, the, the all in one, Not green. the green one, the white. Yeah, the green one. Okay, well, shake on it. Well, I don't know if I wanted to wear that, but okay. But you said green. Yeah, because I was trying to... Because I was thinking the white one, but I'm meeting in the middle with the green. I, I don't care what she wears. You can decide. So if you want to really? do the green... Well, yeah, you we'll decided the Oakley, so... Oh, Oakley or green. That's so cute. They'll both yes. be wearing green. Oh, and also, talking about green, we've got our green double buggy. Yeah, we've got the double buggy for her in Oakley. Oh my gosh, we tried it out yesterday and... Well, Oakley tried it out, not us. He loved it. <laughs> it's the Bugaboo Donkey, donkey five. 5. Yeah, yeah. it's it's really, really, really good. I cannot wait for them both to be in there. Like, can you imagine? So Our hearts cute. are just going to explode. Like, I know. It's going to be so cute. We um, have the bedside crib. The Moses basket from Docker Top. Yeah, that's that so cute. That is gorgeous. Cute. We also, which isn't to do with the baby, but we sorted out what it is, really, because it's in her room. We, didn't, we literally tidied up our whole wardrobe. That was a mission. That was dreadful, but we've done it. And I did see you've been putting your clothes in the wardrobe inside out. What? You put your jumper, you know the jumper from Primark and it says something club on it. You put it inside I would out. You inside did. Because I would never. Well, I've noticed that you've been putting the knickers in the socks section, so. But is that so much of a big deal to what yeah. you've done? Why is that a big deal that it's inside because out? It's meant to look neat. And I just I will not do, do it now. I'm leaving it until okay. you decide to do well, it. Well, I have a whole load of pictures on my phone of things that you've been doing. You've got a picture. Are you joking me? <laughs> are you actually joking me? That no, is... I'm not. Can you show me one? Are you, are you joking me? No, shall I show you? Yeah, but it's because, off the sink. No, oh, that's, yeah, the it's that's the very childish. Do you want to see? Yeah. Okay. Well, no. Do you know what? In my head, so Leah will moan at me if I do something wrong. <laughs> but in my head, I'm like, it's really not that much it's not worth an argument so you know what I'm just gonna take a picture <gasps> so I have the proof in my head that Leah did this wrong but I'm not gonna okay. come on then all right I want to see this I think I literally took one yesterday <laughs> yeah so the picture is of Leah's toothpaste and like so many hairs in the sink you like pull your hair I don't know what you do to your hair but I you leave it I brush my in the hair sink. and obviously postpartum hair loss it goes oh, in don't the sink. use that as an excuse <laughs> and then obviously I'll be so distracted with Oakley oh, that yeah. I will walk out of the room and I'll forget about the mess yeah of course yeah, yeah. well I'm going to be taking pictures of what you leave can you actually I'll be quite interested to see oh yeah like today when you left an empty bottle of Ribena Okay, fine. Enough of our squabbling. Let's get into Midnight Mail. Okay, so every week our listeners send us in some questions. I'm going to go through them right now. Yeah. I These ones are actually quite funny. Okay, so Sabrina wrote in and she said, How and when did you guys know for sure that you wanted kids? This is us in a nutshell. I remember we were in the car and we were like, let's start our IVF journey and we'll freeze the embryos. And then when we're ready... 
Yeah. We will have kids. <laughs> so obviously us being us, as soon as they were frozen, we were like, Yeah, we're ready. Let's yeah. let's do <laughs> we it were now. Like, so impatient. I remember we were like, let's just freeze for some reason we said just my eggs first. We said let's yeah. freeze Caitlin's eggs mm. first because we knew you would carry and we were gonna do reciprocal IVF. Yeah. We went home and I think it was Christmas and we told our mums. Yeah. And uh, we were like, we're just gonna freeze my eggs and then yeah, we'll have a baby in the future. And then literally I think it was less than a month later. That is us. We time. did an embryo transfer. <laughs> and I feel worked. like I feel like we always knew we wanted kids. We and did. Yeah, well, I think we were ready. Well, we are ready. We so. are ready. Yeah, but we we literally spoke about kids since the moment we met. Like we've always wanted mm. kids. Would that be a deal breaker if I said to you, like when we met? Yeah, don't want kids. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Same. I wouldn't want to be. Yeah. With, I I I know it's. I guess no, it's not really a bad thing to not want to be with someone if they don't yeah. want kids because it's personal mm. preference. It's how you want your future to shape out to be. Yeah. So I feel like we knew very early on. Yeah, we did. Although we always say we were going to have a baby boy called <laughs> Oakley Casper, Casper jo- Oakley. Jasper Oakley. Jasper Oakley. <laughs> Although we did Oakley. Yeah, we preferred yeah. this Oakley in the end. Okay, from Verti, I didn't know that baby boys get erections, so I was already on my way to the ER <laughs> when my mother-in-law told me. I'm not going to lie, that would be me if you probably oh, didn't no. tell me. <laughs> That's true, but could you imagine? Oh my You'd be gosh. so worried and then... To realise on the way to ER, you'd be like, oh, you'd be so relieved, yeah, but, but you'd feel so silly yeah, at the same time. But that is such like a funny story to look back on. Like, I'm, yeah. I'm sure you and your mother-in-law laugh about that all the time. Oh, definitely. But yeah, you didn't know, did you? No, because I think actually we had that conversation yeah. before and you were like, no, no, it's normal. As two girls that have yeah. only, like, we've been... Really to- been with girls. Yeah. We didn't know that that was a thing. No, I think actually before Oakley was born or when Oakley was born, we were actually researching because obviously Mm. we want to know as much as possible because if anything looked wrong, we'd want to know. But yeah, that would be be me going to the ER if it wasn't for you. (laughs) That is true. And to be fair, Connor has been really good as well, hasn't he? He's like, He he has helped a lot with things that we like wouldn't know about. No. No, so that's really good. But I feel so sorry for her. That must have been so scary, <laughs> but, like, so relieving when yeah. she found out. <laughs> like, when you just know, oh, gosh, I don't have to go to a Let's just go home. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. So the next one is from Keris, and Keris has said, one of my cats once brought in a dead bird without us noticing, and my one-year-old found it first. What? I would scream. Oh my gosh. I want to know a the story bird. of what the one year old, like, did the one year old just pick it up and <sighs> give it to her? Like, what did the one year old do when they found this dead bird? Oh my gosh. Oh. That would be awful. You would scream. I don't think you would even be able to get it off Oakley. No, I, I probably would run away. <laughs> You'd run away and just leave him with it. Like, Caitlin, get down. <laughs> There's a dead bird in the house and Oakley's got him. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That would be so... Oh, my oh. gosh. You have to let us know the actual story of that because that is like, crazy. What did you do? What Did did your did your child think it was a toy? Like, <laughs> like I feel like a one-year-old wouldn't know what that is. No, they wouldn't. So we don't have any more time for questions for Midnight Mail, but if you do want to send in any of your funny stories, parenting, tips and tricks, head over to our Instagram, the 3AM Club podcast, and you can DM us all of your questions over there. Make them juicy. Make them very juicy. No info is too much info. <laughs> no. This is the bit I've been waiting for, Caitlin. I feel like it's going to be a big weight lifted off our shoulders because this is a question we get asked. How many times a day? Honestly, like, I couldn't even say. So many times like, that it actually drives me a bit mad now when I see it. I'm like, <laughs> we're going to tell you a promise. Probably more than 100 <laughs> times a day. And that is not even an exaggeration because on every video we post, what is baby girl's name? Everyone wants to know. And I'm so excited. But you're going to find out literally right now. Should we oh do a gosh. drum roll? Should we count down and then do a drum roll? So we're going to say it. We're just going to straight out say it. Yeah. And then we'll talk about the story behind it. Okay. Yeah? Sure. Okay, so... Drum roll, please. You're going to say the name. I'm going to say it. Yeah. Okay. Because when you say it, it just sounds so beautiful. Right, you so ready? So say it with a really nice voice. Okay. <laughs> okay, ready? Oh, no, I'm going to say it terrible now. Ready? Drum roll. Uh, Lila Anna oh. Shield. <laughs> oh, 
I just can't believe you said her name. I know. Is so her, her now? So her first name is Lila. Her middle name is Anna. And then her surname is Sheil, which is our surname. That, oh my gosh. So how do we get you into this You look emotional. Name? I, I do feel really emotional because her name has so much meaning and there's so much behind her name that means so much to us. Yeah. And saying her name, like... Such a big thing. Like, we've told everyone that follows us, like, they're also, like, our family. So it feels so good to actually say, like, this is baby girl's name. I Lila it's, Anna Shiel. It's so relieving to say it. And I'm just, I'm so excited for to just tell everyone, like, what it means. Yeah, go why on, we tell everyone it. Why it me- what it means. Well, it's kind of a long story. So <laughs> <laughs> we had a baby girl's name planned for... Probably years. Years. So we originally were going to use the name Adara. Yes. And then the middle name Willow. It was set in stone. Like everyone knew Adara Willow. Yeah. Because Adara was my favourite. Willow was yours. Yeah. We were like so set on that name. And then one day I was just scrolling through my phone. It was maybe two weeks before our embryo transfer. Mm. And I came across the name Lila. And I said it to Leah and she was like, I really like that name. So Leah's mum came over, my mum came over as well, and we said to them, which name do you prefer, Adara or Lila? So it was split, wasn't it? Some people said Adara. I think it was my mum. Like, your mum loved Adara, but she was like... As soon as she heard Lila, she was like, no, I actually really like Lila. Yeah. Like, I prefer Lila to Adara. So we didn't think anything of it. We were like... We're not sure what we're going to do. It's still split. Yeah, and I was convinced we were going to have a boy. Like, if the transfer worked, I yeah. thought we were definitely going to have another boy. So I just thought it wasn't even, a like, a question. Yeah. So then, um, sadly, like, just literally, just as we found out I was pregnant, like, not... Not even, like, just, like, we were getting positive tests, weren't we? So I had the embryo transfer on the 1st of August. Mm. And we were testing every day, (laughs) doing pregnancy tests every day, even though it was too early, but didn't tell anyone. We kept it to ourselves. And then my mum sadly passed away on the 8th of August and we never got to tell her that the transfer worked and I was pregnant. So from that moment, when everyone did find out and I got the positive like Mm. blood test to say I was pregnant, everyone said it's going to be a girl because of my mum. So everyone was like convinced it was a girl. And Which was actually dreadful for us because we felt the most insane amount of pressure. I remember you crying saying like, I don't care if I have a boy, but why is everyone saying that if we have a girl, it's from my mum? Yeah, if we have a boy, was, will, my, will it not be from my mum? That was specifically what people yeah, were saying. There was like, was if awful. you have a, they're like, you're going to have a girl because your mum is sending a girl to you. Like it's a mm. gift from your mum. So in my head, I was like, oh no, if it's a boy, does that mean it's yeah. not a gift from my mum? But like, it wasn't just one message. This was like was hundreds everyone. of messages saying you are going to have a girl. Like we were so wide, we took a sneak peek test. It didn't work in the end. It was like, <laughs> we sent it to the wrong place. But like, the pressure it was so much pressure it was even even family members were yeah. like no it's going to be a girl you're going to yeah. have a little princess and mm. we was like no we're not sure like we don't know what it could be yeah. and then anyway as soon as we found out it was a girl we were like no we're going to we're going to name her Lila because that was my mum's favourite name. Yeah. And then obviously we changed the middle name to Anna which was my mum's name. Yeah. And then um Caitlin did a psychic reading with her cousin Siobhan and your mum came through. Yeah. And what she was saying, I mean, it's for you to say, really, mm. you should really. <laughs> it was it was a long thing. So, like, obviously, a lot of people don't believe in psychic readings and, like, can be sceptical and stuff. And, like, I'm a bit scared. Like, I, I do believe in them because mm. I've had a few that have been really, 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 like, so to the point that I'm like, how could they know that? Yeah. So many things that, they, that the psychics said about... The person that came through, which yeah. we believe was my mum, was just so accurate. But one of the things they did say was that she knows you're using her name in the baby's name, and, you and had, that we've changed, and we had to change it. Yeah, that we changed the name. Yeah, and we're she, using her name, and that she was very name. happy about it. Yeah, which was so special. Yeah. So Lila, Anna, and Oakley will always know about their Nana Anna. Yeah. 
oh, that really feels good. To it get does. It, off it does feel our good. Chest. It feels weird because it feels like it's been kind of like a sin to say the word. Yeah. So Leah actually let it slip once <laughs> on a live and quickly ended the live and was like, "Oh no, I've just yeah, like but, I've just said the word we're not meant to say." But everyone <laughs> thought I said Isla. Yeah. And then we had necklace. Oh, we can wear our necklaces. Oh my gosh. Oh, we've got Oakley and Lila necklaces, and oh my god, we would film and would forget. So Caitlin like edited this YouTube video had Lila's name on it. Oh my gosh. I spent Mess. literally, I think it was four hours yeah. blurring the name. Because then I would watch it back and I'd be like, oh no, Caitlin, there's a bit of here. And then, oh. and then when it went live, there was apparently a tiny section where someone could see something. They thought Lily. They thought it was Lily. So guys, that is the end of our first ever episode and I had so much fun and I feel like we spoke so much and we revealed baby girl's name, which is just amazing. I actually can't believe we've revealed her name. It's so exciting. And it comment is. down below what you guys think of her name because we would absolutely love to know and make sure to follow us on all social media platforms at the 3AM Club podcast over on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube. And make sure to also send us your questions over on Midnight Mail on our Instagram. Make them juicy. We want really, really juicy ones. Yeah, we would absolutely love to hear from you guys. Thank you so much for listening. Bye. Bye.